Uh, hi guys. Hello. What? Okay. <laughs> hey, serious face. Serious face. <laughs> Welcome back to my channel. I feel like it's been forever. It has. I feel, it's, it's, it it's hasn't bad. though. It's been the same amount of time since the last it's time. Sure. I feel like this has been like four weeks. But um, it hasn't. I know. But welcome back. So we are talking about episode four and five. I almost said five and six. But six is the next one. I mean we can talk about episode six. <laughs> Well, we can, we but we um, don't know anything about it. We can put our theories there, but really, we're talking about four and five, which were really good. Yeah. So, what are your thoughts? I just, I loved it. I mean, there was a lot of violence and angriness, angriness, <laughs> um, temper tantrums, and some true colors were sh shown, which was great. Well, yeah, we uh, uh, we we kind of predicted that those true colors were gonna happen. True story. <laughs> yeah, so. Though, though I'm gonna cut right to it because I have to know, what the hell was the mid, mid scene credits in the last episode? It was, what's his, uh, what's his face doing hammering at something, but I didn't get it. He was it. making his shield. Is he that made, what it was? Okay. Yeah, he was making a new shield. So I heard a theory about that, which I will get into once we get to that part. Yeah. But I, I just, just had to cut to it. I actually I looked up a certain character that was introduced in this ep in episode five because I was like, who the heck is she? And I read a theory about what's gonna happen with all of that. So I'm pretty it's excited. Interesting. Anyway, yeah, my first thoughts were it was pretty. They were pretty great episodes. I mean, episode four kind of was... Kind of blah, but it was more than figuring things out. I think it was building up to that final moment. Moment, yeah. Cause which that... led to episode five, which was, like, pretty a lot of action and stuff. And building up to the season finale, which will be next week. Boo. But, but then know, Loki's closer. I'm so excited. Loki. Loki. I'm sad. But I'm also looking forward to um, binging the whole series together because I I am just interested in seeing the whole story together. You just want to watch um, Bucky Barnes's butt. <laughs> I'm not gonna comment on that. <laughs> My family watches this channel. <laughs> Um, okay, so my thoughts on it. I thought it was really good. Um, the first, the episode four, I. I mean, we kind of knew what was happening with, uh, what's his face? John but, Walker? Is that who you were talking yeah, about? Yeah, but I didn't want to say the name. <laughs> oh. Because eventually we'll get to it, but I'm yeah. just pointing out that that was a given. And then the next episode is kind of interesting to see um, Bucky meet up with Sam at his, like, with his yes! sister and stuff. That whole so, dynamic building. Oh, and I then the it. ending, of course, of that episode. I'm excited. But yeah, let's let's probably dig in. Yeah. Dig, 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 I... dig. <laughs> okay, so episode four started in Wakanda, and it turned out to be a flashback for Bucky. And he's with, okay, is it Ayo? I forgot. I Ayo? can't pronounce it, so don't ask. I forgot how it's pronounced. They say it in the show. Um, I apologize. Because I wasn't really paying attention. I was writing notes. <laughs> Fail. I know. It's my job. But, um, Ayo. Ayo. I want to say. I thought you were going Ayo. I want to say Ayo. I have no idea. I don't know. Uh, anyway. So what kind um, of One of the Dora Milaje. <laughs> um, one of the Dora people. Um, <laughs> you're gonna get how many nicknames you're gonna get in there? Shut up. <laughs> um, one of the Dora warrior people. <laughs> the Wakandans. No, they're high, like. I know, but you could just say Wakandans. I'm gonna I say, say the Dora. I'm gonna say the Dora. Okay. 
Dora the Explorer. I knew that was coming. Um, anyway, they are with Bucky Barnes and they start, like, they want to test him to make sure that the brainwashing is completely gone. And so they start saying, she starts saying the words of his brainwashing, like the rusted longing, you know, all that stuff. And he like starts having flashbacks of like everything he's done, like killed Tony Stark's parents, like all that stuff. And it was really emotional for me because like you can tell like he's crying. So he obviously feels the pain of that. And like at the end of it, they realize that the brainwashing has no effect on him. He's free of it. And like he just breaks down it. And it was really sad, but like happy moment. How did you feel about it? Do you remember it? Yeah, I do remember that because it was the first. It's the first part of the episode, so it's easy to remember. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was emotional. It was interesting to see him cry. Mm -hmm. You don't really see him cry. He's usually like very emotionless, <laughs> yep. and it was very interesting to see him like sensitive and like cut through that barrier. Yep. And see that humanity. Yep. I didn't know I was going to say humanity. Until Which you kind of see more of a softer side of him d during this whole, like, series. Mm -hmm. So, And I think it's a lot of character growth as a whole for both of them. Both Sam and Bucky. And um, I just really like that about the show. Because it digs deeper into people that you normally... That are normally overshadowed by people such as Steve. Mm -hmm. And now you're getting to, like more in depth with them and seeing mm. their side of the story. I like it. <laughs> it flashes back to the forward with the Dora warrior and Bucky talking in the path, uh, pathway sort of street outside of where they're staying. Um, well, away from where they're staying, technically. Um, she gives Bucky eight hours to do what he needs to do with Zemo because Zemo's the only person that can help them find the information that they need to take down Carly, get the serum, all that stuff, blah blah blah. The news of the Flag Smashers previous attack in the, or the attack in the previous episode where they blew up that GRC um, depot place, whatever, and they heard all those people that were in there. That's been all over the news. Everybody's talking about it. Carly and her followers are watching or listening to a broadcast. Um, Zemo and Bucky, or Sam, not Bucky, Bucky comes in while they're listening to the broadcast or whatever. Mm -hmm. And they're talking about what to do next. Where could they possibly find Carly? They figure out that Carly has like a a person that she's very, like, her guardian, almost, which they named earlier, I think, in another episode, which is Danya Madani. And so they figure out where the whereabouts of this woman are, and they go searching. And it brings them to the place where Carly and her followers originally were. And nobody wants to help them out. And Zima was smart and brought candy in the form of Tur Turkish Delight, which I've never had Turkish Delight. I don't know how it tastes. Have you ever had it? No. Nope. I don't know. It made me curious because it kind of looked tasty. <laughs> but he brings Turkish Delight because it was a favorite of his son's, which was really sad because his son died. Yep. And son was killed in... I was gonna say, yeah, I was going to say Wakanda, but I meant Sokovia. Sokovia. <laughs> um, but yeah, his son died in the Sokovian attack or whatever. And it was really sad. But he used that candy trick to make one of the children talk to him and he got the whereabouts of where this memorial service was going to happen for this Danya Madani. Madon and I thought it was pretty handy and he like bribes the kids to not tell Bucky or <laughs> Sam <laughs> so that he's useful so they can't turn him over because mm -hmm. he knows that they're going to turn him over as soon as everything is um, figured out. So I thought it was pretty smart for him to do that. I enjoyed it. It's kind of amazing how smart he is. Yeah. I mean, he is a baron, so. I don't know, I'm just saying. Royalty. Pretty good schooling, I would assume. Sam calls Sharon for a favor because she has connections still. And she agrees, but we don't really know what those connections or what she's really looking 
what he really wants her to do. All we know it has something to do with a satellite, which I was like, okay, something's up. They just want to look and make sure that nobody's going to trap them in or whatever. Mm -hmm. But it turns out they're still walking into a trap, which was kind of fun. Bum, 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 bum. So Carly and her follower, one of her followers, are in the graveyard. And I thought this was actually the memorial scene. And I was like, oh, that's nice. But then they, like, did this, like, secret thing where they pushed in the gravestone and another one popped out and they got the serum out. They are talking about the serum and all the change that they need to do in the world. And they're discussing, like, the follower says that Carly should have become Captain America. Like, she's like a symbol, kind mm -hmm. of like Steve or whatever. But she turns it around and says that shield is a symbol of a bygone era and it shows just how left out everybody else has been, like, compared, you know, like, picking one person to do, protect all of these other people and it just leaves them out. Which I thought was very interesting because I never thought of it that way. But I mean, she does have a point. And she says that it's better that if it had been destroyed. And I was like, you go girl. So Bucky and Sam, I think, are walking down the street. I think, was it? What, which part? This part where he comes in. Was, were they just walking on the street? And I like, think so, and he comes out from nowhere. Yeah, and he's like, I don't even remember what he said, but it was probably something jackass. -ish. Yeah, he was kind of a jerk, and he's like, I think he said something along the lines, you guys need to, like, tell me what's going on or something. Or along that like, line. Like, step down or whatever. Step yeah. away. Something. Or he was talking about, um, Zemo. That too. <laughs> Though I thought it was funny. He was like, how did, like, you guys helped him get out or something. And Bucky's like, technically. technically he got himself out. <laughs> I was like, that's true. It he is. got a point. <laughs> because he, they were, they were chatting away when he walked in the room. So. Yeah. Which Bucky did say how he was gonna get out. <laughs> There's a memorial service for it, like kind of goes from there. Like John Walker and Lamar Hoskins um, team up with Sam and Bucky to go to this memorial service, and Sam tells John Walker and Lamar to like, hey, just give me I think it's ten minutes and let me talk to her, and like we'll go from there. Mm -hmm. And John, you can kind of tell that John Walker is like a bit on edge more than usual. Like I feel like you could tell like the wires were kind of, yeah. you know, like the rope was unraveling mm -hmm. sure. a bit. He was scruffy. He wasn't as clean cut as usual. His, like his attitude towards them were kind of like just very standoffish. It was mm -hmm. just, you could tell there was something going on. And honestly, I think it was part of, like, him not being able to accomplish things such as Steve Rogers, and mm -hmm. that was starting to wear on him. And the toll of kind of keeping that pedestal, I yeah. think, was kind of getting to him a little bit. Because he kept saying, I'm Captain America, I'm Captain America, and it's like, dude, we get it. <laughs> you're wearing the shield, you're wearing the stripes. So they are sitting outside with Bucky and Zemo, who is handcuffed to, like, this thing... I don't know what it was, but it's like this huge thing. I think it's like an engine or something. Probably. I don't know. But he's hooked to this thing. Like Bucky and watching John like freak out like as he's pacing and Isn't all he this... like saying he's like we should we should go in there? Yeah. yeah. Like, and Lamar down. is like trying to like calm him down. Calm him down, but also like, yeah, we should probably go in or whatever. Mm. And Bucky's like, dude. Give him his time. <laughs> and I was like, Bucky's standing up for Sam. Oh. And meanwhile, Sam is talking to Carly and trying to, like, talk her down, you know. He's trying to get the serum. Um, and he, they, like, kind of have a very big discussion and they realize they have a lot in common. Mm -hmm. And I think Carly would have stepped down. If they hadn't barged in. Exactly. And at this point, John Walker decides to open his big fat mouth. Okay, it's not fat, but it's big. It's big. Um, and barge in like Carly Mar Morgenthau, you're under arrest. And screw things up for Sam, because Sam had it under control, but no. 
John Walker and Captain America. Somebody's getting a little emotional. I'm sorry, <laughs> but this part irritated me because they could have stopped it all at this point. Had John Walker not screwed it up. They they could have ended it, but it is a TV show, so if they did it that way, then there's the episode. True, but this also, I mean, it leads to other things that happen that could have been stopped. I know, there's a lot of, there's like, it's called the domino effect. I know, and this domino effect was huge. Yup. Huge. Yup. So, John Walker scares Carly. Carly runs off. Bucky tries to go chase after her because he's the one with the serum. So it makes sense for him to go up against oh, yeah. her. Sam, in the meantime, is like, you guys, just effed up. And I think he goes to search for her as well. Because, like, the whole, like, compound or whatever mm -hmm. it is is, like, a maze. Um, Zemo, you see, like, the empty handcuffs. And, you know, Zemo's escaped. So he's somewhere. What? And then it goes to Carly and... I don't remember how it happened, but like Carly came into the, like the room or whatever, and then Zemo's there. He's shooting up the place. He shoots her, and then the she like takes cover, which knocks over the serum or something. Like the pouch was somewhere, mm -hmm. and the serums little serum vials go everywhere. And he looks at her. And then he looks at the serum, and there's, like, this big speech kind of here where he's, like, talking about the serum and stuff like that. And so he's talking about, like, how, like, he wants to destroy anything with it and the serum yeah. and all that. But that's I know it has something to do with, like, the serum. Serum and Because that's of always people. been his goal. Like, no matter what. Like, yeah. in Civil War, that was his goal. Now it's his goal. Mm -hmm. The only reason he hasn't done it to Bucky is because, like, he... I don't even know. He gave a reason, but I don't remember. What I don't it was. remember what the reason was either. But like he, he had a reason for not doing, killing Bucky. killing Bucky. So he just like stomps on all the serum vials, except for one, which is hidden, so he doesn't see it. Mm -hmm. And he takes off, I think, or she takes off. She takes off because yeah. I think somebody comes and she's able to get away. Yeah. Oh. Walker comes in, knocks him out, Zemo. And then she sneaks she off. She sneaks off. And he, Walker, picks up the vial that hasn't been destroyed and puts it in his pocket. For a rainy day. And he keeps asking people if they had a choice, would they take the serum? Yeah, Carly's got patched up somehow. She's talking with her one of her followers. It's actually one of the main followers mm -hmm. because you've seen him a lot throughout the series, which if like you it's kind of something like if you don't pay attention, you'll miss it. But he's like one of the main people that she like trusts in her organization mm -hmm. or whatever. And they're talking about the plan and they know because Walker and like how much he interferes with them that he has to die. I'm like, they want to kill Captain America. I can't blame them for it. I don't blame them. Walker is a terrible person. It goes back, like, the power broker contacts Carly, and they give, we don't know if it's a woman or a man yet. We don't know who this power broker is. Mm -hmm. Which, like, just tell us already. That's <laughs> going to be the big finale. <laughs> Probably, which there have been some theories, so. Mm -hmm. Um, Are you gonna share? I will in the next episode. Okay, okay, don't get mad at yeah. me. I was just asking. But anyway, Carly finds out that if she doesn't give up the serum, which has been destroyed, except for one vial, um, they're gonna come after her and kill her and everybody that follows her, which is really sad because she's trying to do a good thing. I mean, her actions aren't the best, but. but she She's has a good, good intention. Yeah, exactly. Zemo and Sam and Bucky are in the apartment that Zemo has gotten for them to stay in. Um, and they're discussing weird things, you know, and Zemo's talking about asking Sam if he would take the serum and give him the chance. But Sam said no. He, he does not want the serum. And it was like an immediate answer, which, I mean, good for him. He knows what he wants. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden, John Walker barges in, like, hey, give us Zemo. And, like, starts going on and on and on. It's, Being the idiot he is. Yeah, and then 
out of nowhere there's a spear that comes in and like almost takes them out and you're, you're just like and all of a sudden the Dora are there and they're there for Zemo and it's a fight between the Dora and John Walker and Lamar Hoskins and it's crazy the women are badass they fight like oh there was no match there like they um, kicked ass and then Bucky realizes that he needs to step in because John Walker is getting his ass kicked and so he steps in and um Ayo Ayo I don't know her name I'm sorry um I'll do better next time um, I'm sure you will. She comes in and they're like fighting and she does something to his arm where she hits certain points and all of a sudden his arm just pops off and hits the ground. And you're like, you're just looking at the arm and then you look at Bucky and there's just shock on his face. You feel terrible for him. But also I was laughing because I was like, oh. Like, I couldn't help it. Like, it was like a funny, sad moment. Because he didn't know that that could happen. And we didn't know that could happen. Nope. But I just thought it was funny because he was trying to do a good thing. And then... Wasn't there a point where him and Sam were standing there watching John and whatever his face is get their ass kicks? Kicked? Kicks. 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 I mean, get their ass kicked. And weren't they go laughing going, should we help them? And they were trying to, like, sit there and decide if they should help them. Yeah, first. yeah. They were, like, jokingly yeah. doing... Like, Sam and Becky were just, like, standing there, like, watching them. And then, oh, like... The part, honestly. Yeah. They were just like, we should probably help them. I don't know, he's doing okay. Yeah, and then Bucky finally is just like... You can, like, see the, like, resignation. He's just like... <sighs> And he like, he's like annoyed. He's like, I yeah, guess I better which, go in there and help. I mean, if you think about it, Bucky is always annoyed to jump in a fight and try to help. Like he was annoyed in the fight in the like first couple episodes when he had to like help Sam. He just like was so annoyed. Like he got to the point where he was just like, jeez, again. Yeah. yeah. So, but yeah. And, and while this fight is going on, Zemo locks himself in the bathroom. And the door opened the door and he's gone. He took off. So John is like freaking out because he just got his ass kicked by the Dora. By a bunch of women. Yep. Which are like go for them. The fiercest woman warriors. Like it like they don't like woman, like gender doesn't even account. They're just badasses. Like the Dora are not people to mess with. John and Lamar are just sitting at a table in like a kind of co a cafe area and they're discussing what happened john's really pissed off about it because he's captain america that shouldn't have happened lamar is like you know what you just need to move on you know and they discuss the serum once more um and lamar says he would take it because like it shows people their true selves you know mm -hmm. it makes them more themselves which John should have taken this as a hint to not take the serum. Mm -hmm. But anyway, um, so they're talking about that and then it kind of moves to like Carly and she's on a phone call and it goes to Sam's sister, Sarah. And you're like, oh no, what's going to happen? Like, uh, and so Carly kind of like, um, not threatens her per se. No. But she kind of, she kind of does. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like a. It's if, a subtle way of yeah. saying, hey, if we don't, if we, we don't do we this. We know where you yeah. are. So if Sam doesn't do this, we will come after you. Yep. But we don't want to. Yep. Like she, she understands Sam and they have a lot in common, common. And like, she doesn't really want to hurt him in a way, but she knows she like has to fulfill her goals and do what's mm -hmm. best. So, I mean, I can understand where she's coming from, but like at the same time, Sam has nephews, there's children involved, it's very scary. Um, Sam getting the call from his sister about the call from Carly. And Sam kind of freaks out because mm -hmm. like- That's too close to home. Yeah. And he realizes that Carly needs to be taken out of the picture in a way, like not so much killed, killed but just like taken in down. Custody and all yes. that. Like, yeah. And so they make a plan. 
Um, I <clears throat> did they decide to work with John Walker? I don't think so. I think it's um, Bucky and Sam. I think John. Yeah, shows that's up. right. So Bucky tells him he is not going alone, even though she says to meet him alone. And they go all dressed up, you know, in the suits. They're prepared for a fight. They don't care what's going to happen. Um, they meet Carly, and, like, there's a whole discussion there. But suddenly, Sharon is on their earpiece telling them that John Walker is going into some building, mm -hmm. which is a trap. And, like, Carly's followers and stuff are ready for them to take them down. Mm -hmm. And immediately, Bucky jumps down, which was amazing, because I just, I love seeing, like, the superhuman aspects shown, because mm -hmm. he never really got to show that so yeah. much. Like, yes, there was some jumping, some running, you know. But I feel like he gets more shine, like, time to shine. So there's just, like, little things... And, like, they're fighting, and they're trying to get out, and Sam's like, I'll, sh like, send you the coordinates, and they're on their way, trying to get to the fight with John Walker and Lamar as they step into this building, and they get separated, and Lamar is taken, and John Walker's freaking out, because that's, like, his best friend. Yep. And so there's a fight. Um, Bucky and Sam show up. And they are involved in the fight. They are a part of the fight. Yeah, and Car something happens where Lamar grabs Carly during that fight, and she, like, freaks out and hits him, and you hear a crack. And it was like... And he's immediately thrown into a pillar, and he kind of just slumps. And you know immediately, like, he's dead. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I think that was, like, a real, like... That was the straw that broke the camel's back yep anyway, like there's no way that walker would be able to come back from this because that was his best friend that was his partner that was like his bucky to steve yep like that was his number one person and besides his life of course and he kind of freaks out and he starts chasing after them and there's some fighting and you can tell that something's different about about John Walker. Doesn't he jump out a window? He jumps out a window. And lands but on, like, like he lands on a car, but he lands like a super soldier. Yeah, like he, he does superhero landing. Yeah. Which I think is funny how they like represent some of like the superhero stuff. They're like, oh, you're a superhero, you got this cool landing. Well, that's kind of like a Captain America landing too. Oh, yeah. Like when he, um, I think, I want to say it's Winter Soldier when he jumps down and lands on the bus, like that one. Mm -hmm. He lands like that and then like jumps down. But he showed that he had Basically, the, serum. the whole thing you're trying to get to is he took the serum. Yeah. Like a dummy. Which, which, <laughs> that's, which. That's it. That's all I gotta say. <laughs> He's a dummy. <laughs> but you yeah. You're a dummy. Yeah, I am a dummy. <laughs> um, but yeah, he jumps out the window. He's fine. Superhero landing. So cool. And then he keeps chasing the guy. He's not really cool. He's not. <laughs> and then he keeps chasing the guy. Um, into the square. And he hits him with the shield. And then he keeps hitting him with the shield. And then he and again, kills them. You're, you're supposed to go, and then he keeps doing it. And, then and he I keeps go, doing it. And he keeps doing it. And he keeps doing it. And he kills them. Death. But And what's funny is he kills them with the shield, and like, straight yeah. down. But that's kind of what Steve did to Tony. Mm -hmm. So I feel like that's kind of cool. I mean, he obviously like didn't a, kill Tony. Yeah. He just, he shut his um, suit off so he couldn't fight anymore. Yeah. But... It's still it kind a of a parallel. Parallel, yeah. But everybody around him is filming this. So it's on footage that it's Captain on America, YouTube. Captain, wah, 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 wah. <laughs> Captain America killed somebody in public that didn't deserve to be killed because he even said it wasn't me. I didn't do it. But nobody knows really knows what's going on. All they see is this action of Captain America killing somebody. Yep. On film. There's no denying that he, yeah, it's on YouTube, it's on TikTok, it's everywhere. <laughs> it's on Instagram. <laughs> the fact that we said that at the same time is really sad. 
Um, but yeah, so there's no denying it. Um, Steve and Becky are like watching this happen. There's nothing they can do really though. They just are helpless watching it. Did you just say Steve and Bucky? I don't know. I thought I said Sam. I'm pretty sure you said Steve. Okay. He's Sam and Bucky are watching helplessly. I'm sorry. I was thinking about Captain America First Avenger. <laughs> and John Walker puts the shield back on and there's blood dripping from it. And it's just a, I feel like it's a mockery of Captain America. It's, it's so sad to see that happen because that's not what Steve would have wanted at all. He would have been disgusted watching that. And that's the end of the episode. And that's the end of the episode. That yeah. is episode four. As I zoom in on my face. It's episode four. I and now we're on to episode. I don't know what she's doing. She five. just told you guys to talk to the hand. And I just spit on my five. own hand by doing that. Episode five. Um, so anyway, the episode starts with Wa Walker running after what's happened in the previous episode where he killed a man. <laughs> he's got the shield, it's bloody, you know, he's got <laughs> blood splattered on him. I'm ignoring you. He's being triggered by like his thoughts. You know, it's very similar to like somebody that's gone through PTSD. You know, it's like, that's what I attributed it to. Like, I felt like he was going through a PD PTSD episode. Hmm. But anyway, he goes into like this warehouse thing. Bucky and Sam show up. They're like, dude. Give us the shield. Give us the shield. Bucky is like, give us the shield. <laughs> Sam is like, we don't want to have to do this, but give us the shield. <laughs> Um, Bucky's like, I don't care. Just give, give me the, the shield. shield. <laughs> and John and Bucky and Sam end up in this huge fight, which was really awesome to see. There was lots of flying. There was lots of arm being punchy. Thing. It was kind of like the team up with Bucky and Steve. I was thinking the same exact thing. I was like, they're teaming up. They're working as a, like partners. And it like showed like how well that works for them. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, um, like I felt terrible because Sam actually lost his wings in this fight, which I was like, <sighs> but it could also lead to new things. Um, and Bucky, you know, he was having trouble with his arm because they like electrified it or whatever. Mm -hmm. But then he came to Sam's rescue when like Walker was about to beat him with a shield. And I was like, oh, he saved Sam, he likes him. But anyway. You kind of realize through this whole episode that they do like each other. Yeah, yeah. Even though they give each other a hard time no matter where they are. But I mean, I feel like that's a family thing. Like if you think about it, family is- I give you a hard time. Well, we're family. But I feel like they've grown on each other through this time, you know. Um, it came out, like, there's the whole thing, but like I feel like they really grew as a team, like two partners, whatever, and they learned their fighting styles and they learned how to put that to use to take down somebody that wouldn't give up. <laughs> but they did have to break Walker's arm in order to take the shield from him, which I thought was terrible, but also he deserved it. He deserves a lot. So Bucky and Sam get the shield. And Walker goes and they return to America. Um, well, not yet, but uh, Walker gets kind of arrested. Yeah, or sent home, I guess. So he, I think he gets more sent home. Yeah, there was like a gray area where we leave Walker where he is, and then it goes to Torres and Sam talking. Mm -hmm. And Bucky like goes on his own way, which they. Sam says something about Zemo. And Bucky's just like, and walks away. He doesn't even answer. He just walks. It's like, I'm over it. <laughs> He's like such a grumpy old man. <laughs> well, he is an old guy. I know. How many? He's, He's like 100 and something? He's over 100. Oh, yeah, that's true. He's like 100. I said he's 100 and something. Yeah. So he's technically. Like, yeah, he's right. like 100 and something. But anyway, um,. Yeah, so Sam and Torres are talking, and Sam has his wings in a bag, 
And he's like, Torres is like, what happened to these? You know, and Sam has the shield and he looks at Torres and he's like, you can keep them, which does that mean Torres is going to be the next Falcon because he's Falcon in the comics. And that made me really excited. I'm sorry, I'm getting emotional again. But I was just like, new Falcon? But from there we go to John Walker is standing, waiting for court. He goes and stands in front of the council. They strip him of all of his stuff, Captain America, his military stuff, all of it. Everything he has earned is yeah. lost. And he makes a good point, which I do not like John Walker, but he made a great point during this whole thing. And they made him what he is. And he did everything they asked of him. He became who they wanted him to be. And this is what he got for it. And he lost his best friend because of it. And like, it's a very good point, even if I don't like him. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I was just like, I'm glad oh. he got stripped of everything. He, yeah. He kind of. Like, I felt bad for his family because he yeah. gets no retirement or benefits or any of that. But like, I'm glad that they didn't put, like, he kind of deserves prison. But at the same time, I would have felt bad for his wife. Like, out of this court session, they meet Contessa Valentina Allegra de, de Fontaine. I want to say it's her full name. <laughs> but she tells them to call her Val, but not really call her Val, which I thought was funny. Um, so the theory is, is that um, she was once Nick Fury's love interest. Ooh. And they also think that she might be the power broker. Ooh. But I also, like, there's some things going around with Thunderbolts, which is a superhero team, mm -hmm. and, like, certain people which are going to be on it, such as possibly John Walker. But it's mostly, like, people that have been kind of done bad things. And it's, I hate to make this, like, comparison but it's kind of like the suicide squad for dc yeah where it's like a bunch of villains the villains that get together and become superheroes. yeah yeah so that could be a thing which that would explain why they have the raft and stuff like that um but yeah she approaches walker and she gives him a kind of a choice and she tells him that mm -hmm. because he has the serum people think he's valuable She's going to call him. He better answer when she calls, whatever. And then she goes on her merry way. And John's kind of like, um, you gave me a card with nothing on it. I don't know what to think of this. <laughs> kind of interesting thing. I'm pretty sure that there's also going to be Contessa's going to show up in different movies, possibly in the future. Like, I think she was supposed to be in um, Black Widow. But because of the Black Widow thing, this kind of like moves it out of time. So we were actually supposed to see her before this. So it would have been like a cool, you know, throwback or whatever. And so this is the first time we're seeing her. It switches to Carly and her followers. And they're at the G GRC where like everything took place, you know. Um, the GRC raided it, took everybody in because they aided and embedded a terrorist organization. Um, I don't agree with a terrorist organization in a way because I do think they have great intentions, but I don't think their actions are the greatest. But I still wouldn't. They're not going by it. Yeah. The right way. Yeah, exactly. So anyway, um, yeah, so they are looking through this empty compound or whatever you want to say and like all these people that were displaced they found homes for them they got medicine they got food everything was taken care of and now they're being arrested because they helped them and Carly is sick and tired of it and that's when she realizes that they need to make their final move which we don't know exactly what the final move is we just know that she's getting ready to lead the final attack which makes us nervous but we're fine Everything's fine. Nothing's on fire. It's great. Not yet. <laughs> it's, it's only the second or the last episode. But anyway, so then it goes to Bucky or, well, Zemo in Sokovia at a grave sort of thing. Kind of like the memorial, mm -hmm. which he mentioned in, I think, in a previous episode. 
like there was a memorial for Sokovia. Have you guys ever been to it or whatever? I, uh. I thought not, whatever. And I was like, oh, he's telling them where exactly he's going. <laughs> and so um, he's at the memorial for Sokovia. Bucky shows up. Um, they have this discussion. Um, Zemo tells Bucky why he's not going to kill him or whatever. And Bucky is like, that's cool, but I got the gun. <laughs> and he holds it up to Zemo. He unclicks the safety. And you're prepared for, you know, some, some gunfire, some dead stuff. And it's empty. Dead stuff? Yeah, really? That's how you describe it? Dead stuff? Some I dead could... stuff. So you're expecting Bucky to murder Zemo for everything he's done, you know? Mm-hmm. But he doesn't. He empties the gun. The gun is not filled with um, bullets, obviously. <laughs> and he opens his vibranium hand and lets the bullets all fall on the ground, which is from the previews. So we knew this was coming, but we didn't know exactly what was going to be happening or what the um, concept of the scene would be. We just knew that there was going to be bullets falling from... Bucky's by reading him. And I'm glad to see that he proved he wasn't a killer. Mm -hmm. He was trying to do better. and He did the right thing. He did the right thing by contacting the Dora. Mm -hmm. And they take Zemo. They say they're going to take him to the raft. Which um, Ross, General Ross, currently leads. Which he's rumored to be in charge of the Thunderbolt team. Hmm. So Zemo could possibly be part of the Thunderbolts. Interesting. Which I think is interesting. And I heard a rumor that um, Yelena Belova, which is from Black Widow, is going to be part of it. But we'll see when the movie comes out. If it ever does. Door. Um. But yeah, so Zemo is taken by the Dora. Bucky asks for another favor. Um. We don't know what that favor is. But he yet. asked for a favor. But he asked for a favor. So, like, we get all that stuff taken care of. Zemo's story is over for now, as far as we know. Um, the Dora are going back to Wakanda. They do tell Bucky that he should probably lay low. Um, they call him White Wolf, which, you know, that's a character from comic books. But it's different. So they're combining two comic book characters into one. Oh, um, interesting. But yeah, they tell him to stay low and kind of avoid Wakanda for now because of him breaking out Zemo and stuff. It's kind of a low blow. We go to Baltimore with Sam, where he's meeting um, Eli and Isaiah Bradley. Mm -hmm. Which it was nice to see that they showed more of Eli mm -hmm. because I really do hope that they bring in the Young Avengers and that he's a part of it. Yeah. Yeah, so Isaiah and Sam have a very deep conversation about what it means to be Captain America, what it means to the people of color to be Captain America, and how, like, a man, um, a black man shouldn't be Captain America because of what oh they God. stood for or whatever. And there's just a lot of racial, um, ch racially charged conversations and I think it's a very bold move of Marvel to bring this in because for current times, it's very relevant. Oh, yeah. Um, I was I was definitely like, he makes a lot of good points. Like, mm -hmm. I definitely side with Isaiah. But, like, at the same time, I think Sam should forge his own path and show what the world, what, like, they're missing, you know? Sam talks to Isaiah. He gets gets a feel of like what he went through, like why he's so bitter towards everyone. You know, he lost his wife while he was in jail for 30 years. They never let him read her letters until like after he escaped because of a nurse, which I thought was, I want to know who that nurse was because I feel uh, like it was Peggy Carter. Well, it could be. I also wonder if, if it's not her, if it was somebody like we'll see later. Oh, that's true. Or, like, I kind of feel like it's somebody from S.H.I.E.L.D. Probably. Like, a secret thing. Like, they were like, oh, because Sharon was a nurse. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, it makes sense that S.H.I.E.L.D. would mm -hmm. be undercover. 
but I just want to know who helped him because I think it's pretty cool of him. But anyway, Sam wants to have Isaiah out in the open and tell like, you know, this is what happened to him, whatever. Isaiah's like, just let me be dead. I'm, I'm good, you know? And Sam leaves him kind of feeling, I don't know, like how would you... I don't, he wasn't depressed. I think he was just like... He, confused. Confused, but like really also know. he gave yeah. him a lot of like information yeah. that like was, I think something that helped him decide to be Captain America. I mean, obviously there's more to it mm -hmm. as the episode goes, but I feel like that was something he's like really thinking about. I think it was, I think that was a push forward for yeah. him. Like he's realizing... Okay, Isaiah may not have been that symbol for us, but I can be that symbol for mm -hmm. us. So, um, anyway, Sam goes home to Louisiana to see his sister. Um, the sister and his nephews all welcome him home, and they tell him that they can't sell the boat, which is from, like, the first episode. And I thought it was really cool that, like, she decided not to sell the boat. Was it she decided or was it she said that it was, like, she, not able to fix it? She can't sell it because they have to fix it first. It's worth more if they fix it first than it is if they sell oh, okay. it. But, like, so Sam starts calling in favors that people owe his parents because, like, he's, like, they can pay us back, you know? Mm -hmm. And I thought it was really cool because it just shows the community coming together. Um, they start fixing the boat up. Bucky shows up. Mm -hmm. And, like, Sam is like, how are you going to get this engine or whatever into the boat? And then, like, all of a sudden it's just moving. <laughs> and then you see Bucky and he's like, hey. <laughs> what up? And you're, you're just like, Bucky, what, what you are doing? you doing? And so Bucky, like, starts helping around, you know, and he has something he, for Sam. He flirts with Sam's sister he and flirts, Sam gets mad. He flirts with Sam's sister. He's like, hey. And, and Sam Sarah, just, like, stares at him, like, and seriously. I, if, if we're being honest, Sarah flirts back. Oh, she does. But Sam, the, Sam's, like, but standing up like, the side going, no. I was like, I was like, what if Bucky and Sam become brother-in-laws? <laughs> Like, like how hilarious would that be? <laughs> but anyway, I think this showed a lot of their um working together because Bucky like sticks around, he's helping him fix the boat up, you know, they have this bonding moment. Um they don't really have to have a talk. Like they don't really talk, they just work. Yep. And I think it works for them. Like Bucky's not one for many words, if you think about it. He is not. And Sam doesn't really, you know, he he's He's the talker, but he knows that Bucky's not a talker, so I think he appreciates that silence between them. And so anyway, the like one conversation they do really have is when Sam is telling Bucky not to flirt with his sister, otherwise he'll chop him up and um, feed him to the fishes. And Bucky's like, cool. <laughs> Even though he's like got a metal arm and he's a super soldier, he's still scared of Sam. <laughs> but Bucky stays with Sam um, for a while. For a while, and like he stays in the house with them. And I, I just the one moment that really got me was when the boys were playing with the shield, and Bucky wakes up, and he he just has like a genuine look of happiness, like. You can tell, like, he wasn't really, like, I don't think he was suffering from his nightmares currently mm -hmm. from that moment. And it, it was just, like, a really good, like, he's happy with mm -hmm. this life. Yeah. And I don't know. I just. Mm. But, um, anyway, Bucky and Sam have this really big discussion while they're playing with the shield. Well, not really playing, but they're kind of, like playing catch with the shield, if you notice. Like, they're, like, flinging it back and forth. and forth. And it was just a really good moment because you see that the brother brothership has kind of, like, brought them together. And they're actually, well, they're not partners, but they're just, you know, a couple of guys. 
I did like that conversation where they yeah. were just like avoiding the fact that they were kind of like partners, but they yeah, weren't. they were like co because they could workers. They couldn't admit that they worked together. Coworkers, well. you like my partners? <laughs> like I was doing this, and I just realized what I was doing. Just a couple of guys <laughs> with a mutual friend that's no longer around, so they're just a couple of guys. <laughs> That was my favorite conversation. Did, was it Bucky who went, um, we're partners and Sam goes, like, co -workers. No, co-workers. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, I think it's funny that they can't admit that they're, like, good together. Yeah. So then Bucky leaves. Um, he tells Sam, you know, if you have a lead on Carly, whatever happens, you know, let me know and I'll be there. Mm -hmm. Which I thought was really big of him because he's like, I'm not letting Sam face this guy alone. Or girl. Sorry. Sam decides to become Captain America. Well, doesn't his sister kind of push him towards, like, yeah, the she, final stretch? Like, she has, like, a discussion with him, and, like, they talk about, like, how when he went into the military and he started avenging and all that stuff, she never thought of it as him running away. He was doing what was best for them, for the mm -hmm. world, you know, at the time. And she never... Like, even when she was super angry and blew up at him at the bank, like, she never thought of it that way. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was, like, a really good conversation. And I think, like, her words about, like, how, like, he needed to decide what he wanted to do mm -hmm. instead of what other people wanted him to do. Um, I think it really told him, like, hey, it's time to become Captain America. So he, like, went really hard into he training. He did. He, like, went back to where, like, they were talking and, like, throwing the shield earlier. And he started just throwing that thing. He almost knocked his head off a couple yeah. times doing with that. But he was trying to learn how to catch the shield. Well, if you notice, he's doing, like, the acrobatic kind of things that Steve was did. doing. Yep. He was trying to, he's trying to do what Steve did, but yeah. in his own way. Which Without I, the serum. Too. Yeah. You gotta Which was that. really impressive. Like, I just love that whole montage. And then, like, the nephews, like, running after him. And cheering him. Yeah. Out, yeah. And ugh, it was just such a beautiful moment. And, like, I was really proud that he decided to be Captain America. Because, I mean, he is a great symbol for mm -hmm. Marvel. Yep. I agree with Steve. Sort of. Um, <laughs> but, no, I see what Steve had thought about when he chose mm -hmm. Sam as the next Captain America. It was very smart of him. And I think that more people should see that. Well, but at least at least most people are accepting the fact that Steve is gone. Yeah. Um, like, I'm talking outside the, like, all yeah. like, fan-wise. Yeah. Um, that Steve is gone. And I think a lot of people were already accepting the fact that Sam was going to become the next Captain America. And then he wasn't. And then John Walker came and in. And then a lot like, of people got hey. mad. Yeah. But they did that on purpose. It so. turns out it was all part of the plan. <sighs> it's fine. Shucks. <laughs> but yeah, I love seeing Sam like train and then like at the end when he like started catching it the shield every single time I was like, Yes. Good and, job. And then like and I just think he's just a normal human. guy. Like know? he was throwing that thing really fast. Yeah. Like I was like, ooh. We moved to New York. Well, we don't exactly know it's New York, but Carly and her follower, the one that was talking with her previously, who has become like the main follower guy. Yeah. Um, they're sitting at a bench and like they're talking or whatever, and Bartok, who was in the first episode, comes up with a case. And bum, bum, bum. we're like, what? talk to Bartok. So that kind of means like she might be in league with Carly. Cause she because she talked to Bartok and said, I have a job for you or something. And she'll, she said, I'll pay you double. Or she's the broker. Oh. But why would she be calling Carly? Or contacting people that contact Carly? I don't know. But, like, if you notice, she doesn't really talk to anyone, but she's contacting somebody. And then they meet up. It's, I mean, it's a theory. It's not that's a guarantee. It just, that I just thought... That's a good point, though. Yeah. Like, that's a good point. Like, she's very powerful. She's in Madripoor. 
You know, it would make sense for her to have the serum because she probably got it from Shield. Mm hmm. 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 Good point. It doesn't mean it is, but it just. That's a good point, though. Because when I saw the phone call, I was like, all right, there's something sketchy going yeah. on right now. I did so. note it, like, I was kind of like, mm -hmm. use this. But um, Carly and Bartok meet, they have, like, this big case of stuff, but you don't really see what's in it or what it does. And then her followers are all standing up or mm -hmm. whatever because she has this app. So we moved to New York. We're in New York area. There's politicians discussing the Patch Act, which has to do with um, GRC and, like, getting everybody that was displaced with the blip or whatever back to their original countries, like the refugees that were displaced or whatever, mm -hmm. they're going back to the regular countries. They can't decide what's happening. It's very, like, blah. Anyway, um, then some security guy comes in and, like, does something with his badge, and then suddenly all the lights go down. Red lights come up, like emergency lights. The politicians are surrounded. And that's where that scene ends. We don't see what's really happening. No. But we have to assume that it has something to do with Flag Smashers. Which I'm really excited to see in the last episode. Because there's going to be a fight. And then it goes to Sam. Yep. And then it goes to Sam. Opening the case. But we don't get to see what's in the case. I need to know what's in the case. I know! I need to know now, though. But, yeah, so that's the episode. Oh, and then there's the after- <laughs> I was gonna say, was there one more scene? I forgot. The after credit scene. The we first have... one of the whole series. Yeah, the, the first one. Which, For this show. Um, is John Walker making his own- Shield. Shield. So, you know, that scene reminded me of Tony in yeah. the cave. I was sitting there going- because <laughs> there's a lot of, like, parallels yeah. in the show. Well, there's a lot of parallels because, like, you know, it's technically the second one after everything happened, you know, and we're still trying to mend what, like, happened. the ending. Happened. Of, yeah. I'm still not over so, I still like, can't watch it. I have not watched it since the first time I watched it. <laughs> um, that was the episode. Yep. So what do you think is going to happen? I think Buggy and Sam are gonna go up against Walker and take him out. Yeah, not this, like not out out, but no, you know, like stop him. Yeah. Um. Yeah. There's a lot of things that can happen yeah. in the next episode because you got one side going on with what's her name, Carla. I'm listening. Carly. Car. I was gonna say Zuri. Just I mean Zemo. I know, that's what I think. I think I was thinking Zemo and Carly and yeah. putting them together. But, like, you got Carly's side and what she's doing, but then you got John on the other side doing what he's doing. So, it's like, where the hell are they taking this? I mean, like, we could see, like, another cameo, possibly, with, like, the Contessa thing and Thunderbolts thing coming out. You never know. There could be more cameos coming. Well, that being said... We will end the video here. And we'll see you for one more episode. Yeah. And then, and then we get a, like a month break, which yeah. I think me and her need it because this is all new. It's actually overwhelming. I love doing it, but it is a lot of work, especially since I do this and I do the camera work. I do the editing. She does I do, yeah, I do everything. That's why it's called, I just, that's I just, why it's called the Kyla District. I just talk and then she does everything. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> Um, so if you guys like the video, please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Please comment. Say something. <laughs> Tell us what to watch. Yes. Give us some stuff. Though, let us take a month break because yeah. we need it. Follow me on Instagram. Follow and her on Instagram and TikTok. It'll be down below. Um, and that is all. I will see you guys later with another video. Bye. Okay.